Today I am adding a privacy screen to my pergola. Hey everyone, how's it going? As part of upgrading our backyard patio space, we've decided to install a privacy screen on our pergola. If we had a normal wood fence, as opposed to the chain link fence we do have, it might not have been as big of a concern. But where our patio sits compared to where a neighbor typically comes and goes, it definitely won't go amiss. Nothing against the neighbor. To start this project off, I break into my stack of pallets that I've been collecting over the last few months and start disassembling them with a combination of a reciprocating saw with a metal blade and a crowbar. With the pallets disassembled, I break out the denailer, which is probably one of the best tools for pallet disassembly, and blast out all of the whole nails and half nails left behind from cutting them off with the reciprocating saw. Now that everything's denailed, I can start running all of the boards through the thickness planer. In between now and when I was planing all of the pallet boards for the patio furniture, I've upgraded my planer cutter head to a spiral cutter head and it does much better work. Granted, I do still trip the breaker every so often, but I find I can push the planer harder now for a longer period of time before it does. Okay, that makes sense. I was pushing it a little bit hard. Uh, it's doing the 96 cuts, uh, 96 cuts an inch. And it was taking off almost 330 seconds at a time, so it makes sense that it would blow the breaker now, but overall I am very happy with how this worked out. I'm going to lift that up, throw the breaker back on, and drop the speed back down half uh, where it was for the first bunch of cuts, and then I just switched it over, so... Yeah, overall I'm really happy with this upgrade. If you missed the pallet wood furniture video, you can check that out up here. With all of the pallet boards planed for thickness, I take them over to the miter saw and make sure all of the ends are at 90 degrees. Some of these I ended up cutting off the pallet with a circular saw and it might not be at a perfect 90, so let's just take the time and make sure that they are, shall we? Moving on to the framing. Since my pergola is 10 by 10 foot, I decided to go with 10 foot 2x4s in order to have a top and bottom span the entire length and rip them right down the middle. For the studs of the wall, I basically cut the 2x4s into quarters between the miter saw and then the table saw. Now that the framing material is ripped to size, I start installing it in the pergola. Using a scrap piece to set my height on the pergola leg on the high end of the slope, I determine level with, you guessed it, a level, and mark the bottom plate for the final length, cut it, and toenail it into the posts. I then screw in the two studs right up against the two posts so that I can get my top plate set in place and screwed in, which made it much easier to install the studs at roughly 16 inch on center. I also built a smaller standalone piece to fit in between the post and house on the left side of the wall just above where my wife is getting ready to have a nap in the middle of the construction zone. Don't ask me. Danielle's sleeping right there. Trying to, you won't shut up. She's sleeping. Well, okay, really? You're going to sit out here when I have this going. Yeah. You're not going to be drilling my ear. <laughs> What's wrong with you? Okay. You go ahead and sleep in the construction zone, you psycho. With the wall framing now finished, I can start installing the pallet boards. I opted to go with screws as opposed to brad nails since I'm going to be leaving the wood raw for a while and I assumed that the boards might twist and back themselves out. Basically I started on the first row on the top of the wall and worked my way left to right and any overhang on the right side of the wall was cut off and used as the start of the next row with a half inch spacing in between the rows. This made us that there was pretty much no seams or cuts right next to each other. And at this point I'm going to call this project done. I'm holding off on finish for now as I want the wood to oxidize and gray up a little bit before I put finish on, just to differentiate it a little bit from the patio furniture that's going to be right next to it. Yes, there's ways to quickly gray out wood with stains or vinegar and steel wool, but I'm in no rush. It can do it naturally. And before you get on me, oh, it's just fine, it's gonna rot. Yeah, eventually everything does. But what I'll do here is bring your attention to these garden planters that I built seven years ago, 
not a lick of finish on them, 100% contact with dirt on the interior, and it's hit with water every other day between rain and watering plants, it's fine, the screen will be fine, I'm not concerned. And if it does break, I'll fix it. I'm not concerned. With that out of the way now, I'm really happy with how this project turned out. It definitely improved this space even more. This patio upgrade is definitely my favorite part of that backyard now. Like, we're out there pretty much every evening. It's great. And with that, I'm going to call it a video. Thank you all for watching, and if you like what I'm doing here, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more. If you have any questions or comments, I look forward to reading them in the comment section below. And if you want to see more up-to-date projects, you can always follow me on Instagram at JohnTheShriner. Otherwise, I will see you here in the next video, and have a good one.